What's up guys? All right, so today's video is gonna be a little bit different from videos that we've done um, in the past. See, if you've been following the channel, you know that we do uh, videos that are almost exclusively about IRS tax debt and solving IRS problems. Um, and as you might imagine, we get a lot of comments on the channel, on the Facebook page, and on the Instagram that are all about uh, questions about the videos we post and about IRS problems in general. So I thought rather than answering them all individually to the person who asked, I thought I'd take the time to answer them to my entire audience, all the subscribers, all right? So in today's video, we're gonna answer frequently asked questions about the offer and compromise specifically from Facebook as well as from YouTube, all right? On the other side of the break. What's up guys, Corey Hankerson here from Legacy Tax and they call me the Levy King because I've helped thousands of clients with unfiled returns, back taxes, liens, and that's right, IRS levies. And I'm also the author of End the Tax Nightmare, Insider Secrets to Beat the IRS and Reduce Your Tax Debt. Inside the book, I show you how to get rid of IRS liens, levies, and garnishments without paying the tax in full how to set up the payment plan that you want and not the one that they want, and potentially how you can settle your tax debt for less than you actually owe. My book has been a top seller on Amazon for years. You can buy it right now. Just go over to Amazon, put down $19.99, and the book is yours. But I want to give you a copy of the book for free. That's right, absolutely free. You don't even pay shipping. All you got to do is go over to my website, www.endthetaxnightmare.com, plug in your name, your email address. I'll email you a copy of the book right away. Simple as that, 100% free. www.endthetaxnightmare.com. Now, before we dive into today's content, I want you to I want to take a moment to ask you to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so, um, and also hit that like button and smash that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time we drop a new video here on the channel. We do tend to do so just about once a week. All right, guys, let's dive into today's content. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do here today is just really just read the, the, the questions I get off my Facebook page and off my um, off different comments from our ads and things like that online. OK, so the first one here comes from Lisa and Lisa says, I read that it takes a really long time for the IRS to agree to compromise. I'm already in a repayment plan. I assume she means an installment agreement. If I file an offer to compromise, do I have to keep paying while I'm waiting on them? Um, the answer there is no. If you're already in an installment agreement with the IRS to repay tax debt and you're going to file an offer and compromise, once you file that offer, you no longer are required to continue making payments on that installment agreement. And that'll be from the time you filed uh, through the period when they either accept it or uh, reject the offer. And then for a period of time after that happens, um, you won't be required to make payments. Eventually, they're either going to accept your offer or you'll go back into your installment agreement status. Okay, the next question comes from Andrea. And Andrea says, can I do an offer and compromise if I recently filed for bankruptcy? Um, Andrea, the answer there is also no. Um, if Well, actually, you know what? Let me take that back. L let me say it depends on exactly what you mean by recently filed for bankruptcy. OK, so if you if you've only filed for bankruptcy in the in the recent past and that bankruptcy is still active, then no, you can't do an offer and compromise uh, because filing for bankruptcy extends what they call an automatic stay to all of your creditors. The IRS is, of course, a creditor in this situation. OK, so if you've already filed for 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 bankruptcy and that bankruptcy is still open, no, you can't do an offer. Um, however, if you filed for bankruptcy and that bankruptcy is now discharged or or, you know, dismissed or whatnot um, and it's completely closed out, once the IRS's litigation department gets word that that bankruptcy is now closed out and the automatic stay no longer applies, 
then your case will go back into collections. And at that point, yes, you can file an offer in compromise, but it has to be completely closed out. And the IRS's litigation department has to have received word that the bankruptcy is closed out. And that typically will come directly from the courts. And so that time, no offer for you. All right, the next one is from Alex. And Alex says, can I file uh, an offer in compromise that includes my business taxes and my personal taxes, or do they need to be separate? Okay, Alex. All right. So the question here is, is let's say, for example, you own a business that owes back taxes and so do you, um, that, that happens. Um, the answer there is it's going to depend. And primarily it's going to depend on whether or not that business is one that goes on your tax return schedule C or whether it's a business that files its own tax return. Let me explain. If you're a sole proprietor, or a single member LLC, then that business's income is going to go directly on your tax return. If that's the case, then it can all go on one offer and compromise. If it's a, if it's a, a what we call a Schedule C business on your return, then yes, it can go together. If it's a corporation, on the other hand, that files its own tax return, then it's considered a separate entity from you. And in that instance, no, it cannot go on your tax, on your offer. You'll need to file uh, a, a separate offer for you, uh, separate from the one that you file for the business. They can't go together in that instance. Okay. Next question here is coming from Jane and Jane says, uh, hello, Mr. Hankerson. I watched several of your YouTube videos on IRS and I really like that you put out such good content and information. Thank you, Jane. I have a question for you. I owe taxes from before I got married. My husband does not owe anything. We don't file together. If I do an offer in compromise, do I have to include his income or can I base it on my income only? Jane, again, the question, the answer there is no. Uh, you can't base it on your income only. The, the form 433, which must be filed with an offer in compromise, asks for all income in the household, as well as all expenses that are paid um, out of that household income. So um, therefore, no, you can't exclude your husband's income uh, when it comes time to file your offer and compromise. Yours as well as his will need to be included and it'll go into the calculation to determine how much of an offer they will accept from you. All right. Thanks for writing, Jane. Talk to you soon. All right. Next up, we have Thomas and Thomas says, what happens if the amount that I offer to settle for is too low? Excellent question, Thomas. So what happens here is that whenever you file an offer in compromise, the IRS is going to calculate uh, what they call what they consider to be the minimum amount that they are willing to accept based on the income, assets, expenses, etc. that you include on the 433. They're going to calculate that on their own. Right. So they're not going to just uh, look at what you put on the in the offer package and decide based on that. No, they're going to do their own calculation and determine how much they'll accept. If the amount that you have offered is greater than the amount that the minimum amount that they're willing to accept, they'll accept your offer. If not, they're going to contact you and let you know that the minimum that they're willing to accept is greater than the amount that you offered. In that case, you're going to have a choice to make. Do you uh, offer a larger amount or just let the offer close out? Your choice. Uh, but, but that's the way the process goes. They're not going to just go by the number that you submit. They're going to calculate how much um, they're willing to accept based on the financial information you provide. But it's going to be they're, they're going to calculate it on their own. OK. All right, Thomas, thanks for asking. Talk to you soon. Next question is from Noreen. Noreen writes, hello, Mr. Levy King. Ha ha. Love your tax videos. We filed an offer to compromise for 2014, 2015 and 2016. My tax person just told me that we will still owe for 2017 too. Can we include that in our in our compromise or should we set up a payment plan? Thanks for your help. Noreen, you're kind of in a, in a situation here. OK, so you just did. You've already done an offer for 2014, 15 and 16. But now it turns out that you also owe for 2017. Um, you want to know, can you somehow just uh, plug that information into the new offer? Generally speaking, the answer is no. Right. You're not allowed to accumulate additional tax debt while you're in an offer and compromise. You also, unfortunately, are not allowed to be in an installment agreement while you're also in an offer and compromise. So, Jane, you got a problem here. Um, you're going to either um, need to uh, do a new offer, a brand new offer, which includes that old liability, um, which will 
potentially require you to default the old offer that you're already in before you can do a new one. Um, that's kind of tricky, Jane. I would definitely recommend in your situation to contact the tax professional. Why not give us a call at one eight seven seven Levy King or LevyKing dot com? We'll be glad to help you out and see what can be done. But in general, you Noreen, you cannot um, accumulate new tax debt while you're already in an offer. That's a big fat no no. All right, the last one here um, is is sort of not really a a question. These are comments that we get. Um, on the Facebook page all the time, and they just really sort of drive me crazy. So I thought I'd take a moment to address them here. Okay, so the first one says, um, maybe people should just pay their taxes like honest Americans. Stop trying to cheat the system. Crooks. And, and, that's, and that's just crazy, right? Um, no one's trying to cheat the system, right? Uh, oftentimes, um, people run into situations in their lives that they didn't foresee, uh, that they didn't expect to happen and it's caused a financial cash flow. Things like uh, the death of a spouse or a close family member, uh, loss of a job, uh, reduction in income, or, or, or heck, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. What about that? You know, these people aren't crooks. My clients aren't crooks. Uh, here at Legacy Tax, we don't represent crooks. Uh, folks that owe back taxes are generally, you know, good, hardworking, honest Americans that had something come up in their lives that's preventing them from handling their tax liability the way that they want to, the way they probably always have. Uh, it's just something's happened in life and life happens to everybody. Take a look at what Elizabeth Martinez says. I can't speak for everyone, but I do pay my taxes. I'm on a payment plan. Problem is you never finish because they add interest, which is very high. I owed $700 and from that it went to 7,000 and still adding. And Elizabeth's comment is right on point. Um, oftentimes people intend to pay and when they find out they owe, they'll, most of my clients have already gone through the situation with payment plans and trying to set up installment agreements, etc. But it's the interest and penalties that kills you. You know, oftentimes you'll be making payments, but the balance, as Elizabeth said, uh, can still potentially go up even while you're in an installment agreement. And that's just because of the interest and penalties. OK, so, Scott, let's not call people crooks because it's, it's just not the case. If you owe back taxes to the IRS, I want you to know that there are special programs out there designed to help you get a fresh start and get out from underneath this tax liability. But how do you know if you qualify? How do you know exactly how much the IRS will accept from you if you were to do an offering compromise? Well, lucky for you that I've created a special tool right on my website to help you figure out exactly what your OIC eligibility is. Just head on over to my website. That's www.levyking.com. Plug in your information, answer a few simple questions, and my team and I will help you to figure out exactly what you qualify for. That website, again, is www.levyking.com, or you can click the link in the description below. Now, I hear you. Some of you are like, hey, I don't like to do the website thing. I'm not a website guy. No problem. Just give us a call. You can give us a call at one eight seven seven levy king Again, that's one eight seven seven levy king We'll answer the phone, and we'll help you figure out exactly what you qualify for. All right, that's it for this week, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. one 877 levy